And welcome to the Beyond 22 podcast. We're your host. I'm Jason Garrett. And I'm Mike Morales. Today, we have two very esteemed guests. They're both strength and conditioning coaches that we know from First Special Forces Group. Before we introduce them, let's take a look at our topic, physical fitness. We will be discussing why exercise is necessary, why we should strength train, and how to do it safely and effectively. Jason, what you do now to stay in shape, bro, now that you're out the Army? Um, well, since I got out of the army, like I've completely changed my entire life. Um, you know, I've changed my whole approach. I really made some significant changes in my life, physically, mentally, and spiritually. They kind of all line up. I've kind of meshed them all together to create a cohesive lifestyle that works together. But what I do, um, to stay fit is I, I set it up as my natural part of my life. I, since I'm working from home as a writer and a filmmaker, I'm here a lot and I'm I'm setting gotcha, a gotcha. lot. So I set up a little gym right beside my studio. You know, it's got a few little things like a total body gym workout thing and um, a medicine ball, some kettlebells, pull up bar, dip bar. Um, like a finger fingerboard and stuff like that. And then I've got a little dojo set up in my garage nice, where <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> where I got a punch and bob, you know, a, a heavy bag, a speed bag, and a uh, double ended bag. Okay. And that way, anytime I go in and out of the garage, I, I can I can just get a few pits in, you know, and and. I'll stay out there a few minutes beating on Bob or something. And then uh, during the summer. Um, I have a room that I work out of. I call it the green room. It's uh, one of those rooms that are all glass with that you put plants in. Okay. So I leave all the windows open and I get acclimated to the Alabama humidity and heat. You know, it's just smoldering hot in there. And and then I'll go jump in the swimming pool. The first time I've ever owned a swimming pool in my life. And it's like that's changed my life. <laughs> that's the best investment in my life. <laughs> But uh, I'll jump in, you know, and thrash around for a little bit, and then I'll float for a little while and look at clouds and then go back about doing my day. Sometimes I'll um, I'll do plate pushes, got a piece of carpet on the on my deck, 30 foot by two foot wide indoor outdoor carpet, and I'll push a 45 pound plate up and down, do a couple of kettlebell swings and do like a little circuit, you know, and, and then jump in the pool after that, well, thrash around active. and just stay there. Staying active, yeah. huh? Yeah, yeah. During the sun, but I've noticed though that for me, my body is its own seasons. I, I notice it's seasonal now that I'm a little older. I, I can see that it's it's more seasonal than um, than before. Before gotcha. I could be pretty much wide open all year round, but now it's more um, like I'll notice a huge energy increase during the summer. Not that I'm less act. I mean, I'm just less active during the winter, right. but. If I can stay at a good plateau during the winter, then during the summer, my automatically my natural physical wellness goes up Definitely. exponentially. After I went to this Tony Robbins thing, you know, I got I got into this um, this jumping around and dancing and stuff. So so I'll I'll come in here in the studio, you know, and I'll crank up the stereo, blast that, and as you can see, I've left the room kind of <laughs> empty in the back, so I can just jump around, and I've got the lights that I can change colors. So I nice, get nice color schemes. <laughs> Turn here. up, huh? Yeah, yeah. I kind of <laughs> get the mental thing going with the physical. So that's go. that's pretty much what I do, you know. Um, that's good stuff. Now that I've rambled on, what about you, Mike? What do you? Uh, me, um, I changed a whole bunch of stuff as well. I changed my eating habits. You know, I'm a vegetarian now. Um, oh, wow. You know, I, know I didn't it. know that. Yeah, yeah. So I stopped eating meat. It's been a, a few years now. So um, I stopped drinking like I used to. That's big. But um, I know what it is to be depressed, you know, and yeah. you know, being down and out and, and letting myself go, especially once I got out the Army, you know. But um, I keep myself in shape. I made a gym. In my garage, you know, I got a lot of the same things you do. I got a weight bench, 300 pound weights, you know, the 300 pound plates. I got a oh yeah, a dip machine, pull up machine. Um, I got a heavy bag, some dumbbells, a rowing machine, stationary bike, elliptical, you know, stuff like that. Plus, I also coach baseball. My kids are active all the time, so 
that keeps me on my feet. And, you know, down in Florida, it's all year round. So, you know, baseball don't stop. So we, we stay working on that. I'm, stay, I'm always outside working with them. I also have a pool. I made a... Oh, when, yeah, yeah. When I bought the house, I, I built me a pool in there just for, for those type of reasons to try to get some laps in, swim, you know, especially uh, I got a hot, hot tub for recuperation. You know, <laughs> when the oh, that's nice. Is. Yeah, um, that's it, really, man. I just try to stay active, man. You know, try to keep up with my youngins. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's basically all I do is play. I mean, I, I don't have any kind of regimented routine. I just get out and play and just have fun, and then I don't really dread it too much. <laughs> I know that. Uh, well, today we have two highly esteemed guests. They're both strength and conditioning coaches that we both know that we knew from first special forces yes, group. Sir. Neither one of them are there anymore. Oh yeah, I was gonna I was gonna tell a story about the first time I met Rob. <laughs> That's right. The first talking about the Thor program, the first time we I ever did it. We did so many plate pushes that first day. Oh my God. I swear I thought I was gonna throw up. And I don't ever I don't ever feel like I'm gonna throw up. But I I got I left the building and my mind was like foggy and I was slurring my speech. I could barely drive my car oh and I was God. like, Oh my God, I am so messed up. Luckily I was on a brand new team and I was the only person on the team. So I went straight <laughs> home and took a nap for like hours and it came back and my mind was still all blurred the rest of the day. They just obliterated me, you know, for quite a while until I went on this trip and this hike up in the, to the Olympic hot springs. Okay. And it was during the middle of winter <laughs> After we'd done all of our Thor stuff and I was walking, it was hip deep snow. I had to post hold the whole oh way and I was carrying 90 pounds on my back. So I was like, every, every step I take, I'd have, I'd have to in. dig myself out and <laughs> do this. So after hours of that and just, I mean, I knew that if I stopped cause it was super freezing cold and it was, I was soaking wet. I knew I'd freaking die if I stopped. So I just kept going and kept going and kept going until I got to where I was going and camp for the night. There you go. Then I had to post hole back out the next day. Oh my God. But after that, I built up a tolerance for it, <laughs> then, but it took that extreme for me to build a tolerance to that. But back to the first time I met Rob, the only way I remembered his name was that he robbed me of my dignity. <laughs> <laughs> Without further ado, let's welcome Hunter Schur and Robert Hartman. Awesome, Excellent. guys. Thank you for having us. Excellent. Well, I'm really glad you guys can make it. I mean, it's, I know you guys taking a big chunk out of your day to be with us, and I appreciate that. Let's start off. You guys could tell a little bit about yourselves and uh, just to let the people know what you do and how uh, you guys help people out. If you want to start, Hunter, please, please do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you again, guys, um, for having us on. It's it's good. It's good to see. You. It's good to catch up. It's any time to be able to see you. And, and Rob is is always a good thing, man. It, it always brings back memories. And it's it's always funny to hear people's association with plate pushes <laughs> for, for whatever reason. <laughs> like at first group, the plate pushes took on like their own thing. Like, OK, well, if you're going to Thor, you're, you're, you're pushing a plate. Well, yeah, there's there's a hell of a lot more going on over in that building other than just pushing a plate along the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and people getting their soul taken, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, but no, guys, it's yeah, like you said. Um, my name's Hunter Sure. Um, I'm currently the vice president of training um, at the University of Health and Performance, and to to some extent, we're basically a startup organization. And our whole purpose is using fitness, strength and conditioning, health and wellness, nutrition, everything is kind of the vehicle for veterans that are transitioning out of the military. Amazing. And, oh, wow. You know, yeah. And, and so, Mike, you talked about it, man. For When you transitioned out, especially getting out, I think that's something. And it goes for anybody outside of the military as well. But so many people, I think, within the military, that becomes so much of your identity. Exactly. It's a lifestyle. It's a part of right. who you are. And you've had, you know, so many different things that you've associated with that. And so... The whole purpose of our organization is how do we then use health, use fitness to help people transition out and find purpose in their life as there's so much more to live. And, you know, once they take the uniform off. And so 
That's real true. Because of that, yeah, we to to your your point, Jason, earlier, it's 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 all lifestyle. And so everything that we sent around here is sent around our four pillars of think, train, feel, and lead. So think is how you move your mind, train is move your body, feel is know your emotions, and lead is kind of the spiritual aspect, but it's it's live your values. Okay. And so everything that we do is very much from that holistic standpoint. And and I oversee from the training side, the, the, the physical side of the house, and we tie everything in with that. And so I was linked up with, with UHP um, through kind of our, our nonprofit organization, FitOps. And FitOps was, was founded by Matt Hesse, and, and the whole point of FitOps was addressing the veteran suicide epidemic. There you go. And oh, so nice. that's and that's that's what kick started things off with him. He served. He was in the National Guard back in the day, and he had been very fortunate. And he founded FitOps with trying to address that. And then UHP, um, our organization, w- w- was born out of that. So we're in Northwest Arkansas. Um, we've got a 500 acre campus that people come in for anywhere from one week to three week long educational programs. It is very much along the styles of, of upskilling people very quickly in a non-traditional educational way. Um, it, but, but it's great. But That's amazing. yeah, prior to that, I was, I was at first group, never thought I would leave until I linked up with UHP, but was up at first group for, for over 10 years. Absolutely loved it. The, the community, the Northwest and, and all that it was. Prior to that, I was in college athletics. That's where Rob and I linked up. It was at the University of Wyoming, and and I would not have gotten and gone to group if it wasn't for Rob. Okay. The, the hiring process, man, over ten years ago, thirteen years ago, or whatever it is at this point, was just kicking off, and Rob was one of the first people through the door. They had an additional opening, reached out to me. He's like, dude, I think you'd really love it here, and so left Wyoming. And once I got to the tactical community, I never looked back. Thank the people, know. the mission everything beyond it. And I I love sports. Don't get me wrong, but it it went from, I don't really care how well a kid can put his foot in the ground and change directions compared to a much bigger picture of everything else. So a little bit of a synopsis, but yeah, I was college athletics before that. And, and for me, I fell in love with the process as far as all that went into training, not just the result, but how do you get from a to B and all that goes into it and all the factors and and everything. So yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, that is, that is awesome. That's amazing, man. Yeah, you guys were always. I mean, it, like I was, like I, I mentioned to Mike, I was like, these two are my favorite coaches out of all the <laughs> ones we've ever had. You know, I remember, I remember doing um, farmers carries, and I think I only had like ninety pounds in each hand. A hunter yells all the way across the gym. <laughs> I know you could do more weight than that. <laughs> like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go back and take these back now. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> so, what about you, Rob? How do you do now, and what got you into that profession? And what do you enjoy most about it? Yeah, fair enough. Um, thanks for having me on as well. And like you said, Hunter, every time you see a face, it's kind of reminisce right in that moment, right? <laughs> um, so, Hunter kind of already alluded to it since our paths aligned for. A, you know, a good chunk of our career so far, but we both met at the University of Wyoming. And one of my former coaches, Mike Sanders, who is now the HPC at seventh group. Okay. He told me, he reached out and called me and said, Hey, these positions are starting to come open. Would you be interested? And I was like, I think so. What does it entail? And he's like, don't know. It's brand new. <laughs> I was like, well, that's intriguing. And he let me know that these positions came open, applied for one and the contracting. If you're not used to it and we definitely weren't in the beginning mm-hmm. was an interesting process and had some odd, what I th- think were interviews in the beginning and then didn't hear anything for 10 months. Wow. And they, they asked 10 months later, Hey, are you still interested? And I kind of laughed like, like, yeah, mm-hmm. like, cause I didn't think it was real. Like, all right, can you start on this date up in uh, Washington? And to be honest with you, they asked, like, do you want to go to Rangers or Special Forces? And I, I didn't know. I did not know the difference. So I, I called around and asked some people, and they said that, you know, you should go to first group. It's probably going to be the right place to be. And I just spent some time reminiscing this week with some people from first group on how good of a culture we had there. Like, to be part of your guys' community has been something that – I'll forever, I'll forever value even down here in Albuquerque. 
where I'm now at the schoolhouse for the uh, Air Force PJs. Okay. I've run into <laughs> first group guys, and we'll sit there and look at each other across the room and be like, <laughs> come up, do I know you? And I was like, first group? And then boom, it hits. Um, yeah, so it's great. And some of that reminiscing, you know, you say, what do you like most about it? Why do you stay in it? Um, I went down and did a course for the Border Patrol this weekend. And it really took me back to some of those first days at first group where we're getting things started. We're creating relationships and just the, the opportunity to help, you know, provide support in this area. But on top of that, and is always how we answered the questions, Hunter, I, I know he did too. When we first got started was what's the difference between college athletics and where you're at. Oh. And it was the level of appreciation, like the amount of support, and like bringing us into your community and the level of appreciation for the stuff that we provided you guys, man, that was a unique situation to be in. And it was really fun kind of going to a community, the border patrol, who's just getting started in these offerings and having the exact same experience. That's amazing. And so that's why, wow. that's why it's so fun. That's why we stay in it. There you go. And I look forward to having more opportunities like that. It really <laughs> feels, feels the tank for enthusiasm for the profession, the community. Uh, okay. Yeah, but that's what I do. Strength and conditioning <laughs> coach, college, first group, <laughs> soar, works for a software company for a while. There's a good opportunity. They're the, they provide a lot of the community with the strength and conditioning training app, Bridge Athletic. Okay. And love that opportunity. We, we'd call that, I guess, or I guess you guys would call that like a broadening assignment. <laughs> but, then I, but then I definitely wanted to get back into the mix. Like I, I miss working with the guys on a day in and day out basis. And so that's why I'm back here doing, doing what I love with the Air Force PJs. That's, that's awesome. Amazing. You guys are yeah. doing, doing what y'all do. I mean, it's, that's amazing. It is. It is definitely amazing. Hunter, do you have any advice for older vets, like civilians who aren't used to intense, intense exercise and how to start a new workout program? You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many places to start, but I think Jason hit on it earlier for him. It, it ties into lifestyle. Um, consistency is king. And I think looking at what are the stressors in your life? What is your schedule in your life? What is your activity? Obviously, there's so many things that go into where do you start? And a lot of the times when you get guys coming out of the community, whether they're big army, soft, whatever it is, just as we get older, it, it's really hard not to, I, I think, reminisce back to, man, I used to be able to do this. And this is what I used to do. And I'd get up yeah. and, and guys think, well, I can't do that anymore. So if I can't go there, then what's the, what's the point? Right. And right. so I think whatever you can start to do from a lifestyle standpoint and a consistency standpoint, so even if that's like, okay, I, I need to start running again. Well, guys are like, well, I can't go for a five mile run. So how do I start? You know, so, so slow and steady working in basic, like I'm going to walk for a couple minutes. I'm going to jog for a couple minutes. And, and when you need to look at, if you're going from zero to one, so much of the time, I think we, we underestimate just what a little bit can do. And I know it's one of the things that we looked at when we were at group was, was what's kind of the minimal dosing dosage effect that we can get. What's the least amount of work that we can do to go forward? Because if you've got other things going on in life, you're not training for a specific job anymore. That's great that you had this, you know, hard leg workout or you jump back into it, but you even see it with active duty guys. They smoke themselves on a Monday Yep. They wouldn't be able to do anything until Thursday. No <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, let's, let's take a step back. Let's look at what can I do today and tomorrow and the day after that, or, or three days a week or, or whatever your schedule allows, but just start off with, with just a little, and then find something that you like, like to do, whether you've got your green room, you're turning it in into a sweat lodge that let that Jason is down in, <laughs> in Alabama, or it, it is like you're going out, you're hitting the heavy bag. Just go out, hit for a few minutes, see how that feels, but find something you like to do. Because obviously, if you don't like doing it, if you can't consistently do it, you're setting yourself up to fail. Right. So find right. find those things that you enjoy doing, even just from a movement and a play standpoint. And Jason, you said, I loved it so much. We're like, dude, I play. Oh, and yeah. I, <laughs> it, it, but that's huge. Because yeah. so much of the time, people are like, man, I need, I think I need to have this rigorous training regime and I'm going to program it out. And it's got, look at the X's and the Y's and the Z, all the, like it's all lined out. Yeah. We're going to go. Alarm set at 5 a.m. F this. I'm not getting up <laughs> exactly. at 5 a.m. I'll hit the snooze. 
but find what you like to do. If you're playing with the kids, man, that's great. That's a huge step. So it's, for me, it's a, it's a lifestyle and it's an enjoyment and it's a consistency standpoint. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Mike built his own batting cage in yeah, his backyard. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you know, when I retired out of the army, um, the first thing I did was something small. I definitely couldn't run anymore because it just jarred my body all to yeah. pieces, you know, and and it just I just felt it too much of it. So I just started what we lived in Snoqualmie at the time and we had a lot of trails by our house and I'd go walk in the trails and spend the whole afternoon walking and then come back. And that was that was plenty. I think I lost after switching my diet and everything. Um it was the first month of being out of the army. I, I dropped 50 pounds and I wasn't doing anything but walking and smoking weed. I mean, <laughs> it was, I mean, that was it. But the stress, <laughs> but the stress levels of my life, had just decreased drastically. There you go. Uh, Rob, is there anything that you'd like to add? Yeah, I'll start by echoing Hunter. Like consistency is going to be the most important thing for all of these components that fit within the overall wellness. So find something that you enjoy and finding a way to do it regularly, that's going to be the best remedy. Now, you guys know me and you know I like I like uh I like numbers, I like categories, I yeah. like I like Yeah, so I'm going to take a minute here and just just give a little bit of me as well because I'm no young buck either, and I still need to find ways to motivate myself because (laughs) what am I training for? So one thing I do want to say is community, like finding people that you can just be around. They don't have to have the same goals of you or you don't have to be training partners with them, but just being around them and their motivation for life, their motivation for fitness, that'll, that'll seep into yours. Now, I'm fortunate that I work with an entire team still to this day. And some of the coaches that I work with, well, they're all younger than me and they have that fun energy and desires to go be physical. And so, man, even just this last October, one of the coaches talked me in to doing a half marathon with him. Now, would I have done that on my own? No. No. Last one I did care. It was back in Washington, like 2016, 15, something like that. Oh, wow. (laughs) <laughs> but I was like, man, if you're doing it, we work together. Yeah, sure. I'll do it. And now yeah, there's that yeah. level of commitment. So yeah. it seeped into my world. And then I think, I think Mike, you mentioned like some guidelines and stuff for that, for guys getting into it. And it's always, and this goes for the, for high performers. This goes for guys getting started. It's always, you know, progressive, be progressive. You don't, it's a phrase that I'm sure Hunter will laugh at when I say it, because I say it so often in so many scenarios, but you don't have to be right. You just can't be wrong, you know? So if you just do one or two things, you're not going to be wrong. But if you went out and you did too much and you can't walk, you hurt yourself and do whatever, man, you were wrong. Gotcha. You don't have to be right. You just can't be wrong. So progressive is definitely the way to go. And kind of on that same note is as you're getting started, smaller doses more often will not only prevent some of that overtraining that in the moment, acute overtraining that we just have a too sore or whatever, but because they're small doses on frequent basis, you're going to help to build those habits. The more often you do something, the more often it's going to stick yeah. and keep to a habit instead of just a, you know, a 20 day goal or whatever. Um, that doesn't mean you can't work up to where you're doing, you know, going back to bro splits, but Err on the side of caution, small doses, build it up over time. And I love challenges. And I would say the people that I've known in the last 13 years of my career also love challenges. (laughs) Now, as we get older, those challenges definitely change. But like another one using personal experience again was I needed some sort of motivation. Coincidentally, it lined up right prior to him asking to do the half marathon, but I need some more motivation for conditioning stuff. And I didn't want to get too specific. I just, I just wanted something. I wanted to find a way. So I put a challenge on my plate, told a few people about it. So if I failed, they knew. And one of them was like two, 200 uh, miles on the rogue echo bike and 60,000 meters on the rower. Now, the guys that have access, which I'll get into a little bit, my technology that saw my heart rate, saw my training load, saw all that stuff. Because I do get nerdy out. I like that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I gave them all access to it. And they're like, man, that last weekend before the end date of your goal looked like a big weekend. (laughs) Yeah. 
I had some catching up to do. <laughs> I'm not promoting it, but nonetheless, <laughs> it's still the challenges are great. That's cool. And then the the tech too for longevity, kind of going with that story right there is it's motivating. It's motivating to see how your habits, how your actions influence your physiology, and that physiology is related to longevity. So if you I think Hunter, you wear a whoop. Whoop, he wears a whoop. I wear an aura. Both do very similar things. I have a polar and Garmin watch that can do similar things, not quite as accurate as those two. But when I saw that uptick in conditioning, and then I saw that uptick it, even further for that half marathon, I saw the downward trend of my heart rate, my resting heart rate. I saw the upward trend of my HRV showing recoverability and health and those things. <laughs> and then to be transparent, because that's what we do right after that half marathon, I didn't do much conditioning. <laughs> and one of those coaches I work with go, looks like your resting heart rate's coming back up. <laughs> and I was like, ah, fair enough. So I got back into it. But again, just different ways to find motivation, whether it's through the people you surround you with, your own personal challenges, or influential technology. I think those are great things for you know people getting out of the army to to latch onto to find motivation. Definitely some great advice, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, you talking about all the technology, it reminds me, I used to keep logs of everything. And when I got out, I started looking at all the all the data that I'd collected over years and years. I mean, when I trained up for Delta Force, I was taking every single spoonful of everything I took in, every piss I took out, you know, every I was measuring <laughs> everything and and all my reps and everything, you know, and I started looking at. I started looking at patterns in my um, in my performance, and I started finding peak times of the day that I, I was more more stronger than I would be otherwise. And kind of, I don't work on a schedule right now, but I use those patterns to kind of add my play in when it's most beneficial. Gotcha, if if gotcha. that makes any sense. So yeah, I, a small. Yeah, caveat to the structure that speaks to my personality. Yeah. And I quite, I quite literally told someone yesterday who was stressing out about their numbers, their wattage to their heart rates and all those things. I was like, I hate to say it, but I think you should take it off. I think you should just go ride. So for some people that that's not the right answer. I'm a numbers guy. It's motivating to me, but I gave quite literally the opposite advice to someone else is like, get on your bike, just go have fun. There you go. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people I mean, look at the, they start making goals, and when they don't meet that, you know, they start bringing themselves down. So that's very soon. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So while you're on that, Rob, um, can you uh, give a little give a little bit on why it's important for people as they get older to stay fit? Um, like like me, for example, I just turned fifty one in November. <laughs> young man, young man. I know. <laughs> I know. It most a lot of people seem to just drop off their fitness as they get older. And I'll go down to the VA, and you see, just the whole waiting area is is just. There's so many people just miserable. I mean, and I know just, lie, man. I guess if they don't have that that push, what they had in the army, mm -hmm. yeah, where they where they're this is what you've got. You've got to do it. Now it's like ah, now I'm done. <laughs> so. Yeah. Why do you think it's important for us to maintain, I guess, a, a level, a certain level of physical fitness as we get older? Yeah, man, that's a that's an onion, right? So many layers to dive oh, yeah. into to where you find some value. Um, yeah, to to go along with the the as you age thing. One one thing with it, you know, we associate these these physical declines and these medical ailments, and we associate them with age. And I'm not going to discount the fact that we get older and things change, but the thing that changes the most are just the habits. And that lack of physicality is really what starts to have some of those things like, oh, I can't do that anymore because, you know, I'm older or whatever. It's, it's not necessarily the case all the time. It's maybe you just avoided that movement. So I think Hunter even mentioned like getting out there and just being, just moving, just finding enjoyment and movement. You saying how you just go out and play, you're your body loses the function that you don't repeatedly do. Uh -huh. So going out and playing and going through those ranges of motion will just help for 
longevity, for function, for feelings. But you can even get into it because, you know, Hunter and his organization focus, focus on mental health. And it's a definitely in the current times, one of the most talked about discussions is exercise has some of the biggest benefits. And it's even been proven by research on not only cognition, but mental health. And, you know, that can be as simple as something, again, I'm a numbers guy, but it's a talk, we'll do a talk test too, but numbers like 70, 80% of max heart rate. So an easy type of activity for 30 minutes a day. And that had a better, and it was a Duke study. I can't remember. So I'm going to butcher it a little bit, but it had better effects long-term on depression than did the medications that they were given those subjects. Wow. So man, just mental health function. There's actually a book and it's become popular in our circles again, which is great. I presented on it to the SOAR guys as a professional leadership LPD leadership professional development, but the book spark, Mm -hmm. the book spark by John Rady, I think something like that goes into it. And it's just how simple physical activity could be. And how that simple physical activity influences cognition and mental health and all the all those variants to such a degree that it's amazing. And because of because how amazing that is and the times we're in, that book has resurfaced and I see it on my social medias from coaches and staff members and stuff. It's it's a very popular one. Um muscle mass is always good for function, but also insulin resistance, you know, preventing that. I'm going to stop there for a minute because I I can go on forever and I do sometimes. <laughs> so pausing. So you said that that book is called Spark. Spark. Oh, okay. I'll have to check that out. Who'd you say that was by? Correct me if I'm wrong, Hunter. I think it's John, J-O-H-N-R, and then his last name's Rady, R-A-T-E-Y. Okay. I'm going to check that out too. Yeah, yeah, R-A- yeah. yeah I believe so. R-A-T-E-Y. Um, yeah. Ray, yeah, yeah, yeah. John Ray. Right. Well, we all first okay. got out here. I lent it to uh, a colleague of mine who's very into, very into that stuff. And his teacher and his wife is also a teacher. And he read and was like, "Oh my gosh, this is great." He gave it to his wife. "Oh my gosh, this is great." So, it's a simple book, but man, it just it hits everybody. Okay. Oh wow, I have to check that out. How about you, Hunter? That you got some advice or other reasons why you think. Old farts like me should. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, one, it's give yourself some credit because I think we're all we're all catching you, man, and we're all going to be <laughs> there sooner than we want to admit. Um, but no, it's it, we know movement's key, you know. To Rob's point, and it's so much of the time people are like, well, you know, my metabolism slowed down and everything out. Well, it's it, the the research is going to back that your metabolism pretty much levels out when you're like twenty twenty five. It doesn't make these massive drops later in life. And so then what you have to look at is the fact that we're, like you mentioned, we're not playing, we're not active, we're not yeah. moving. And we know that your body, like any other skill or, or stimulus that we give it to, it's if you don't use it, you lose it. And so Rob referenced muscle mass. We know that if you are not active, you are going to lose muscle mass. We know if you are not active, your bone density is going to decrease. You're going to be at more risk for for fractures, for osteoporosis, and and so many things that just come from the lifestyle that you choose. And so the reasons to stay active, yes, on the physical and on the health side of that house, but I know Rob also mentioned it in regards to some of the technology from, from behavior change. And being able to use yeah. those challenges into using those challenges to find your why. And um, I mean, talking books, like if you guys haven't read Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, yeah. <laughs> um, phenomenal. But I mean, there, there, he's got a quote that talks about he who has a, a why to live can bear with almost any how. Okay. And I think that goes back into that behavior change and, and, okay, well, why do I need to be active in the first place? If you've got a challenge that you're going to be doing, like, dude, I told the guys that I work with, I need to keep up with the young bucks and the young people because I looked them in the eye and said, I'm going to row this many meters. I'm going to ride this many miles. If that's your why, 
do it, send it, find whatever it is from that community aspect. Cause I love when Rob said that because the accountability that you're going to be able to be held to. And I think that's what a lot of people lose when they transition out, you go from, from being on a team, being in a platoon, being in an organization. And yes, we're doing all these things day in and day out. And I don't want to be the weakest link on my team. We're going to be doing this right. every day. Damn right. I'm going to hold my end of the bargain. Right. And on some ways it's, it's great. Cause you get out, you've got this, you know, less stressful life. I'm walking every day. You get to smoke a little weed down in Alabama. Not Alabama. But when you were, yeah, I got yeah. you. Not, I'm not, yes. Gotcha. <laughs> but, not Alabama. Not, no, not at all. You, no, that's illegal down there. Don't do that. Yeah, that's um, right. <laughs> but <laughs> But you, you kind of find that, like, what's what's the driver that's going to be like, dude, why do I need to be active, man? Nobody's going to be testing me, so to speak. Right. Nobody's going to hold me accountable. And so I think for for me and for us, like, it's what, what's your why? What's going to get you up? What's going to keep you active? And there was a commercial that came out a few years ago. And it's this grandfather, this older gentleman, and he's got this kettlebell in his garage. Oh, I've seen that. And like... Good. You're watching it and, you know, his, his daughter and his wife is looking at him. He goes out every day and picks up the kettlebell. He's struggling. And he goes out the next morning and he hauls it outside and he's picking it up. And over the course of the year, it leads to him being able to pick the kettlebell up, press it out, pull it back in. Well, it's it circles around having his granddaughter daughter being able to lift her up lift her to the Christmas tree to put the star on. And nice. I'm sobbing, like watching <laughs> this commercial. But it's so beautiful because that was his why. His and why, that circled yeah. into like, what's going to keep me moving? And so to your point, we know everybody, I think, knows. There's nobody that doesn't know that exercise is good for them. Right. Nobody, everybody knows that I need a run or I need a walk. I need to do some sort of aerobic conditioning. I need to do some sort of resistance training. But getting into that emotional side of it. We can hit people with those facts all day long, but until you're able to tap into, okay, as a group, we're going to do this, you know, this organization, we're going to focus on this many miles, this, whatever it may be. And so if you can really get into that, why from the accountability, the fun, uh, you're going to get people moving. But, but to me, it's an emotional side of the house thing. Cause everybody knows that we should be active. That's true. You know, even people that are yeah. sitting on the couch, they're like, wait, exercise. Am I saying that right? <laughs> it's like, is that so yeah, that, that's, but yeah, the health factors and everything else, it's tremendous. And to Rob's point, we know mental health, we know mental cognition increases with physical health, even if it's what people reference as zone two that, that Rob talked about. It's kind of that, you know, 70 to 80, 65, 75% of heart rate, nothing crazy, but we know 10, 15 minutes of that and then mental acuity, decision, everything goes up afterwards. The uptick is huge. So just by being active, and it's, again, not for a plug of UHP, but it's why we use the foundation of fitness and everything that we do. Because we know it's really hard to have a healthy mind, a healthy lifestyle, if you're not going to be active in the first place. Makes sense. I love that. Yeah. Uh, the why factor, man. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I know my why was because I didn't want to be miserable. I mean, I wanted to, I want to live that, you know, I, I want to uh, be able to live the best life that I can. So, and to do that, I mean, I need to be in the best physical shape. I don't I need to be in physical shape to be running a marathon or half marathon or anything <laughs> like that, but, but just enough so that I don't, I'm not, I can move freely and move um, without pain. There you go. So, yeah, Mike. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my wife. My wife is is my kids to keep up with them, man. They they so active. Every single one of them, you know, they all do sports or run or do something. So I can't be the fat guy sitting on the couch not trying to <laughs> you know, keep up with the kids. Um. So, you guys got any exercise like? people could do at home with little to no equipment at all. You know, just like since we, you know, we got gyms and stuff like that in ours, but what if they don't have a gym in their house and they, they wanted to work out and something like that. You got any exercise, any, any advice like that? Rob? Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> you know, if, 
if it's important and it, and it should be obviously you know i think a small investment you know would be worthy and so all of us have done circuits and body weight circuits and you know having just visited a place that didn't have the, all the same facilities that we're all used to even in our own garages those circuits were their main way main way of getting strength training muscular endurance training but nonetheless that type of activity and so finding time to create a body weight circuit that consists of pulling pushing squatting lunging and some sort of, of hinging or post extra or posterior chain exercise would be ideal. Now, the reason I said that bit of an investment would be worthy is the hard one, not impossible, but the hard one to do just walking out your front door and going to exercise is the pulling one. It really is. So, you know, if, if able spend a few, few bucks on some sort of suspension trainer that can fit within your door so you can, you know, do some rows, uh, buy a or hang a pull-up bar or something along those lines. But man, if you've got something that can hit the hit the back, suspension trainer, pull-ups, you have everything you need. Is that like the you TRX? Uh, I'm sorry. Is that like the TRX thing that you guys used to issue? Uh, like y'all used to sign out to people that were going deploying and stuff. And you, I know. Yeah, I, 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 we I used was being to do brag. It. What do you call it? Brand agnostic. I was, I I was thinking, but, but you're right. You're right. I could tell, but that's what I, I, I thought. I thought I was thinking that whole time. I was like, I think he's talking about the TRX, TRX thing. Yeah, hundred percent. Something like it, it itself, but something like that definitely would pay dividends. And when you do the exercises, like we said, you got the squatting, you got the lunging, both in the lunging, linear and lateral, so you get some variety, so you keep those motor patterns fresh. Um, when you do the pressing, you know, push-ups are fine. Modified handstand push-ups or inverted push-ups, whatever you want to call them. And then things as simple as just good mornings or single leg RDLs with body weight. It's surprising. It's getting one, another one of my challenges was like doing a, does, I'm not going to say what it is because I'm not going to promote <laughs> it to everybody. But nonetheless, a certain number of repetitions every day on some of those exercises for a month. And I'll tell you, just that body weight alone volume for the posterior chain with single leg RDLs, boy, howdy, that did some work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Honey, you got anything to add to that? No, I think Rob did a great job as far as breaking it down from just like that movement pattern standpoint. You know, it's talking about bro splits earlier and, and a lot of times like, oh, I'm going to do chest today and back and buys and legs and, well, I don't want to do leg day. But, <laughs> but when you look at just basic fundamental movement patterns, push, pull, squat, hinge, you know, throw in there if you want to call it a movement pattern, some sort of carries, whether that's farmers, whether that's hugging, you know, or whatever it is, but just learning to carry and support. And if you can start there and it doesn't, to Rob's point, it doesn't need to be much and a little bit goes a long way. And so if you're touching those basic things, you at least give yourself the ability to perform those movement patterns, be able to get up and down off a couch, be able to step off a curb, be able to push yourself off the ground. And so when you're looking at that, why or the purpose for it, those movement patterns are such a great place to start. And then you can get in, into levels. You can go vertical push to Rob's point, horizontal, you know, we're going side to side and lunges. We're going front to back. We're doing all sorts of different stuff, but make sure that you start with those fundamentals first before, you know, learn to bake the cake before you're trying to just put icing all over it. <laughs> you know, you're getting on Instagram or YouTube and like, Oh man, this is really what I need to do. Like too, yeah. if you haven't gotten out of the couch or you're not moving on a regular basis. You don't need to incorporate this next level high tech, whatever it may be. That's so true. And so in the range of motion, the weight, the intensity and everything else is, is learning to kind of meet yourself where you're at. Rob said it earlier and, and you know, it's a great line in regards to making sure that you don't do something wrong. Start with just a little bit to make sure, because you don't need to break yourself off. Like there's, you know what? I haven't moved in a little while, but today I'm going to do 300 rows on my new <laughs> T on T rings or TRX or whatever it is. But we yeah. do that. We, we, we get, you know, we get these new toys and we get so excited or we learn the skill and then we just beat the holy thing out of it. We're like Chris Farley from Tommy boy, where he, <laughs> you know, starts the fire in the guy's office. But, and that's great to have that excitement, but like 
how do you like, okay, let's do a little today because you know what I want to do the consistency aspect. And, but yeah, the movement patterns, that's fundamental. Even to this day, no matter what it is, who I'm working with myself, I'm like, am I touching these fundamental movement patterns from just a basic human being standpoint? If I'm not, I'm going to be missing something. I'm missing out on something. And so having some sort of weight resistance training, we know that's great. We know it's a big bang for the buck. And then going back to that conditioning side of the house, making sure that, you know, Jason, you talked about running doesn't feel good anymore. And so it's like, okay, what do we need to find? You know, you're Rob and I worked with a coach, you know, that was strong as could be back in the day and he got into cycling. And so we'd get oh, into yeah. work and he was on the, he was on the bike at, since like three 30 that morning, we'd get texts or emails at like 3 AM from <laughs> coach greener. And, but it's, but it, he had, he had some hip stuff going on. And so he's like, how do I keep moving? How do I find something else? Um, and Trent has worked in the community. Um, so shout out to coach, but yeah, so it's, it's finding like what you can do within reason that, you know, goes back to the rule of like, if it hurts, don't do it. Like there's a difference between soreness and be like, well, I'm supposed to run, but every time I run, I can't walk for a week. Well, yeah. stop running. And so that's doing something wrong. But if you're doing some sort of lifting, some sort of resistance training, meet yourself where it's at. That doesn't mean that you've got to have that 300 pound set of weights. If you haven't moved in a little while, body weight stuff is a great place to start. Have some sort of conditioning, starting to walk, getting a bike, using a rower. And some of those tools get a little more expensive, but they're a great way from a non-impact standpoint that can be a little more jarring for people, especially as we get older. If you haven't, you know, taken care of yourself or you've got the wear and tear due to the job that a lot of people, you know, coming out of serving have to be able to continue to get that heart rate up, get blood flow going, exercise yourself to stay healthy. Yes, sir. Excellent. Yeah, that's great. Um, you know, both of you guys are talking about pushing, pulling in a push and pull. And it reminds me, <clears throat> I've always been a big fan of Bruce Lee when I was since I was a kid, you know, and I've always read his stuff. And and one of the things that I that fascinated me was um, his he always studied the body and the push and pull. He would do a lot of his own conditioning without without even having to move was using two different muscles to push and pull against each other. So you're you're doing that. And as a writer where I'm just sitting on my ass all day, I'll I'll sit there and do something like that it, where I'm stationary, but I'm strengthening my core because I'm tightening it up and I'm moving it and I'm resisting against my own resistance without even having to move. So is there anything else you guys want to add? You know me, Jason. I always got stuff to add. So <laughs> well, go ahead, Rob. When you just when you just talked about that, because we have you know we have a history. So unsolicited recommendations is just where we're at these days. And you were talking about the pushing and the pulling and sitting at your desk all day, and the fact that you're a writer. You know that's a good point. And if I could give again an unsolicited recommendation is. You know, every 60 to 90 minutes, you know, find a way to get up and and move a little bit, stretch a little bit. And it's not it's not net, the 60 to 90 minutes isn't necessarily because of anything physically specific besides you need to move. But because you're a writer and you need to get into that deep thought, get into that flow. It takes about 60 minutes to get into there. 90 minutes, you start to lose some of that focus. So I have focused on you first, the writer, 60 to 90 minutes. Do what you need to do to do your job, but then hit that buzzer at 90 minutes and get up. Do those things that you were just talking about. Play, turn that music on, get crazy. And then one more thing for you or your you and your viewers is listeners. Another book because I'd love to to recommend books, especially ones that are resourceful. This book I actually read myself and then gave the book to the two coaches that I work with as a Christmas present. And you know, stories are good, so I'm gonna tell a story first. Is when we, how many Hunter? Have you seen the the book Peak? Uh, the book Peak? Yeah. Are we talking by Bubs? Yes. Yep. So that book by by Bubs, that book Peak, is a really, real, in my opinion, anyway, a really good book, and it talks about high performance. 
on all these different aspects and what's associated with high performance, what research is there. And it's just like tip of the spear stuff you want to be aware of. And that's fantastic. And that's great. And then he put out a new book just this last uh, year and it was called peak 40. Now the hard part is that he put peak 40 great for marketing. Yeah. So there's the peak book. Fantastic. So that, that was the initial one. Listen to that and audible while walking around Chambers Bay multiple mornings. And I say Chambers <laughs> Bay because Washington guys, you know, and it was great. I really did enjoy it. I had a lot of conversations with coach afterwards, but the peak 40 came out and I was like, I'm in that guy wrote a good book. What does he have to say for 40? I'm 42. And the bad thing is, is it's a good book. It's a good book. No matter what age you are, like if you want longevity, you want health and you want those key components, you can keep looking back into to reemphasize or refocus yourself. It was a really good book. And so I bought it for the coaches. And the first thing I got was, what are you saying? I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, the forties, it's a marketing ploy. Everyone wants to find their youth after 40. Like I get it for marketing and it's yeah. Nail on the head there. However, it's a good book for everybody. I said our, one of our guys who is deployed, I sent it to him in his care package. Like it's a really good book. So peak 40, it talks about a whole variety of things in terms of nutrition and fitness and so on and so forth. And so it's like 17 bucks on Amazon. So if I could recommend that to you guys, recommend it to your listeners and your viewers, I think you get some big bang for your buck on that one. Definitely. Yeah, check it out for I'm sure. Definitely going to check that out too. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, to Rob's point, I think the reason why it's so good is it's, they cover all the things that he talked about. It's such a generalist approach where it doesn't go deep diving in all different things, but you know, it talks about basically four different areas and it gives you some really good knowledge to be very dangerous to take care of yourself. So yeah, I would just reiterate what Rob said. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's, Oh, go ahead, Mike. No, I was, I was just saying, man, you guys gave some great advice, man. I mean, yeah. Throughout. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really glad you guys could make it. This is um, really valuable stuff. I'm, I'm taking some of this, some of this home myself, and adding that to what I'm doing. I'm over here and, writing uh, notes, man. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I figure I'll just watch it again instead of having to write anything down. <laughs> I'd actually like to go back to Hunter's organization. You say that's in Arkansas. It is, yeah. And so we're just west of Bentonville, Arkansas, and, and when people hear. One, when people hear Arkansas, they're like, what are you doing in Arkansas? Um, and that's one of those things that I never thought I would say, but it's I full-on drank the Arkansas Kool-Aid. Um, but we're in the northwest corner. Bentonville's home to the Walmart. And because of that, so many vendors and so many other things have created such a massive opportunity of so many things going on in this northwest corner. It's a huge fitness capital now, and we, we're going to be the capital, the mountain biking capital wow. of the U.S. We've got 500 miles of trail. Like I go out my garage and 30 seconds, I'm in the trail system. Um, so plug to Bentonville. But I say all that as far as it's, we've got our campus, which is on the Oklahoma, Arkansas border. And the whole point of our organization is working within the veteran organizations. We work with active duty. We've had first got first group guys out as well. We've had guys from Ranger bat. We've had seals. And the whole point is basically purpose and checking in with, with who you are and f helping find your why. And a lot of times we hear that find your why and it's a little cliche and it's a little cheesy or whatever it may be, whatever people have connotations about it. But we use health and fitness because we know to Rob's point, getting up, getting moving, it's going to allow you to perform at a higher level. It's going to allow you to live a more fulfilling life. But yeah, it's, we run courses, anything from a week long to three weeks long, depending on what you're coming in for the course. And so if people have any interest they can check out our website at university-hp.com. Um, if you are interested in coming to camps and courses, there's funding lanes, there's scholarships, there's all sorts of things that are get, that are that can be given out. But if you get your name in the system to start with, then we can go from there. So sign up. We've got we got a big year of 2023 in growth coming along. Um, We've got a nice little partnership now with Nestle and Pure Life. So if you're ever in a Walmart or a Sam's Club or whatever it is, you ever see Pure Life, Nestle Pure Life water cases on the top, you're going to see our logo. And there's a little QR code 
that you can just click on that and people are going to be able to get a link to, to us and who we are and, and everything nice. that's going on. with Right. It. Yeah. I, I was thinking, I wasn't thinking about actually going through myself, but I was thinking about coming out and seeing what you guys do. Uh, Arkansas is not that Dude, far. Love so. to have you. It is, but it's closer yeah. to Mike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I think that's about it for now. We really appreciate you guys coming Definitely. on the show. You've, made a really big impact. I would appreciate that. So. Definitely. It's been an honor, guys. Appreciate it. No, thank you for thinking of us, guys. It's it's good to see you, and it, it's great to be thought of, man. There's so many good memories that go back back to that facility and that organization and, and the people that are there, man. Yeah. So we appreciate well, it. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. And and I wouldn't mind coming out watching nice. you guys punish some Air Force dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Doors open. Just we'll line those dates so that when we have the most uh, throughput, <laughs> yeah. we'll be all day. Yeah, I want to see someone quit. No. <laughs> Bap out. Ring the bell. Keep moving on. The laws of attraction. Put it in the universe. Hoping I get positive feedback. Wow, that was amazing catching up with those guys. What was your favorite part, Mike? Man, I I really love the Y factor. Yeah, um, yeah. That's big. That's big. I mean, a lot of people lose that Y factor when they get out the military because, you know, like I said, depression is, is, is big on, especially as military guys who get out and don't have no structure, you know, it becomes like a, a non reason to be alive type stuff. And, and, you know, a lot of people, um, we know actually suffer from mental health stuff because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the why is everything Tony Robbins talks about. I mean, that's the first thing he has you develop is your why. You know, you have to develop that. What I do every morning is I have a folder that I that I open up and it's my leverage, my past, present and future leverage. Nice. And and what I did for my past was I took the pictures of me before I admitted myself to five North, you know, the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, because I could see it in my face. I could just see how depressed I was. That's crazy. Right. That's so crazy. I took, a, I took a few of those pictures in there that, that make me feel a certain way. And I took like the, the daily list that they, the, here's the rules pamphlet that they, I have a picture of that okay. from five North. And, and I bring that up and I look at those pictures and I say, that's my past leverage, my nice. present leverage. Oh, and uh, that's my past leverage. One of my past leverage. I've got three past leverages. I've got that. The next one is the mission that I started when I retired from the army. And what I've gotten there is I've got a little video, the video of my mine and my wife's wedding in front of the first group wall you know okay. i just scroll through every bit of it until we kiss and then i watch that part wow. and then i and then i take the pictures from when i started my journey to colorado and okay. that's kind of where i started my journey and um i take those pictures look at them and then the next one which is my future which is like you know anything that i how I want my life to be. I mean, it's kind of hard to 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 put into a picture the freedom that you want your life to be, but but that's a good know. that's a good concept right there just uh what they call that um vision boards. Right, that's exactly yeah. what it is. Mm -hmm. It it's I, I look at my vision board every morning from past, present and future leverages. I I got that the leverage idea from Tony Robbins. And I'll listen to loud music that you can feel, feel okay. and put you in an emotional place. Gotcha. So I pump myself up for the entire day prior to that. That's good. That, stuff, that's man. kind of my why, you know. That's good. That's good stuff, man. I mean, man, I'm just so appreciative that we are doing this, you know, and and helping people out, and hopefully helping people out, you know, in the near future, or they can listen to this podcast way later down the road, and and. Yeah. Hopefully it helps them. Yeah, someone it, it's going to help someone that's for sure. I Definitely. mean and it, they don't have to be military. That's that's what that's is exactly. great. Because I, I mean all the stuff they were talking about is not military related only. I mean, it's a uh, you have to move. You can't just sit down and think everything's going to happen for you. You know, you have to get up and move around or you're going to sit down and die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah.
That's it for now. I'm Mike. And I'm Jason. Until Until our next episode, episode, keep your head above water and flow with the current. Today on military suicide prevention. Too many of our nation's heroes are taking their own lives, and we, as a nation, need to bring that to an end.